All right, so in this uh, part of the Unit 5 project video, we're going to try to do um, and program what happens with our enemy of the script, of this game, I should say. <clears throat> so as you can see right here, I have this sprite that I call bad dude, and that's our enemy in the game. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have the bad dude start from right up here. I'm going to move my variable so you can't see it. And I have my enemy move from left to right on the screen, get to the right side, go down and move this way, right? So what I'm gonna build is a bunch of stuff that basically controls that, both controls the uh, logic and the movement and the behavior of this sprite. So to start off, I when the flag is clicked, I set the sprite to 20% of its original size, which I found I've liked, and I hide it. And then when I receive game start, I wait three seconds. And then I have this custom block right here called levels that I'm going to use to control uh, the logic of what the uh, bad dude should do. Um, another thing that I have as well is a movement block, which I'm going to show y'all a little bit of in a minute, but that's going to control the actual motion of what the bad dude is doing. So I'm going to leave enemy movement right here for now. What I want to do in levels is I want to basically create a couple clones of bad dude. So to do that, I am going to have basically a control. I'm going to say repeat right here because I want to do, I want to create a, a clone a couple of times and I'm going to say right now it'll be three and I'm going to uh, give it a little bit of a wait. So I'm going to have it wait for just a second and then I am going to create a clone of myself. So as we can see, that'll happen three times. Um, It'll basically create three different clones. The reason I put the wait time in there is because I don't all, want them all to be jammed together. It's going to make sense once we start with our actual enemy movement. Um, but before we begin, one of the before we go into like the enemy movement, one of the things in the slab is that we want there to be uh, levels in the game, and that's why I've named it levels specifically. Um, we want to make and change what happens when you complete and start a new level. So what I'm gonna start off with is first, I'm gonna click okay here. I'm gonna go to variables and I'm going to make a variable called level um, number right there. And I'm going to click okay. And level number is gonna be what we start with. So I'm gonna set level number when I first start to one because of course we start on level one and in this game I'm going to go through three different stages and then in levels I'm going to edit this and I'm going to give it a variable which is level num and I'm going to type it in just like that go ahead and click OK and the input of course for levels will be level number just like that so I'm going to edit but what do I do with level number well here I'm going to make it so that it basically adds an extra enemy each time so I need an if statement right here. I'm gonna have three if statements and they're all gonna be checking the level number. So here I am going to operators, I'm going to my equal sign. I'm gonna say if level num equals one, I wanna do this right here. And then I'm gonna dupl duplicate this three times or twice really to be what we do for levels one, two, and three. Um, another thing I also want to do is I'm basically going to program this a pretty easy way. Um, I'm going to pull a plus sign out right here. Each time when I go up a different level, I'm going to increase the number of enemies. Since I start with three enemies in the very beginning, I'm going to say that my number of enemies that I'm going to spawn in is going to be level num plus two. Now, if I duplicate this, I go for this and for this. We'll see that each time that this gets triggered, if the level number is one, we're gonna create three enemies. If the level number is two, we're gonna create four. And of course, if the level number is three, we're gonna create five enemies. So I click okay. And now each time this happens, I basically spawn in three enemies, right? But what happens when I actually spawn and create these clones? Well, I'm gonna to go to when I start as clone, I wanna trigger something and here, I'm going to trigger enemy movement. Um, before I do that, I also want to make sure I show my sprite because of course I do hide it in the very beginning. So I'm going to put enemy movement right here. Um, enemy movement is where we're going to start to get uh, a little bit more complicated. And you'll see why in just a moment because I kind of want to uh, change the behavior of each sprite. 
Um, so I'm actually going to leave that to the next section of this video. So the next portion is the enemy movement. Uh, this is probably one of the slightly more difficult things that I had to program. Uh, I eventually figured it out, and I do have an example of the script up to my left, so I'm gonna go slightly off that, but I'm gonna show you sort of what I went through. As you can see right here, when I start as a clone, and as we saw, we have levels that will create clones of our bad dude sprite, this guy right here. You know, what happens um, when we start as a clone? Well, I wanna start the movement that the clone does. And so I want it to start going across the trajectory of left to right, down, right to left, down, left to right, and so on and so forth. So um, I take the level numbers and input, and I'm going to use that later to uh, show, to kind of create more difficulty, I guess, as, the, as the, the sprite goes on. So, you know, if we're on level two, I want the sprite to go a little bit faster, but to go ahead and start, I'm going to uh, start on a standard position. So here I've, I'm gonna choose negative 210 because that's pretty far to the left of the screen and then I'm going to go to Y150 and that'll basically put us in that upper left corner right there. So I start there and then what I want to do is forever, where's my block? I'm gonna find it here somewhere, the forever. Forever, I want to basically move from left to right. So I'm going to motion, I want to change X by 10 because that's where I'm starting. Um, and then I want to say if um, my Y position is too great, or I'm sorry, if my X position, since we started negative 210, if my X position goes past a certain point, I wanna turn around. So I'm gonna go to uh, variables. Actually, I don't want variables, I want my motion. If my X position is greater than, let's say, um, 215, then I want to turn around. But what I also want to do is I want to use an OR block right here. So um, I want to use this OR statement to check if my X position is too far one way or the other. So I'm going to pull in another operator. I'm going to pull in my less than symbol, put that in right there, change my X position to check for both positive 215 and negative 215. So if my X position is too far over here to the left, I want to basically switch directions. Um, now to do this, I actually am gonna have a variable. And uh, as you can see over here, I've created a local variable that I call X rate end, which is, stands for X rate indicator. Um, I'm going to pull that over. And I wanna say, I'm gonna change X by that X rate indicator. And that's important. That way I can use that variable and change it as we go on. So here I'm gonna set X rate indicator to uh, negative, I mm, actually wanna do something a little bit fancy here. So this is where we get into uh, what I basically wanted or how I'm gonna set the difficulty. So here I'm gonna set my X-ray indicator to the level number. So in this case, it would be level one and that's gonna control their speed. And uh, I have sort of decided that my uh, best change X speed is gonna be 0.75. So I wanna change the level by 0.75. Um, in the very beginning, that's gonna make it so that the sprite goes slower. And then as we get further on, it's still gonna be bigger, but it scales it back just a little bit. So there, I'm gonna set X-ray indicator to level times 0.75. And then I want to um, basically use that X-ray indicator to change the X down here. And then of course, once I get too far left or right, I'm going to change x-ray indicator to itself. So I'm gonna duplicate and use this, get rid of you. Um, I'm gonna multiply x-ray indicator by negative one. So go ahead and duplicate that by negative one right there. Um, so this should be exactly what I need to move. So if we review this real quick, uh, I go to negative 210 and 150. I set right X rate indicator to level times 0.75, which is going to be a positive number. I change X by that positive number. So I'm gonna move from left to right. And then if my X position is greater than 215 or if it's less than negative 215, I swap that X rate indicator for the others. Um, one thing, or I basically make it the opposite of what it is. So if I am off to the right, I change it to negative and it goes negative in the coordinate system to the left. Um, another important thing to note right here, this is actually extremely important. When, we, when we're when we using clones, 
we have to make sure that some of the some of the variables that we use are local to that clone. So that's why you see this X-ray indicator right here. It has this little local icon on it. So if I make a variable and I want to make it for this variable only, I'll call this example var for example variable, click OK. It makes it so that when you create a clone, that example variable only exists inside that instance of a clone. It only exists in clone one, whereas clone two can't access it. The issue that we get into and that I can demonstrate in a later video is that if this X rate was, uh, you know, let's say X rate indicator was a, a global variable, the first cat that gets to this side of the screen would change it and everything would immediately go to the left. So um, another thing I want to do real quick, I want to go to motion. I also want to change my Y every time I get to that far right side or far left side. So here I'm going to change Y by negative 25. And basically what this is going to say is if X that if that X position is to the far right or far left, changing Y by negative 25 is always fine. We don't need that to be a variable that changes because I always want to move downward. So here I'm going to click OK and I'm going to try it out. I'm going to click stop. I'm going to go ahead and start it. And we should see that cat go from left to right up there on the top of the screen. And there we go. We now have these three sprites that are crawling from left to right. You'll see right here when they get to the very far right of the screen, they're going to hit the far right side and each one behaves exactly as we want it to rather than maybe seeing that X variable be changed and immediately swap to, you know, the other direction. But that is how we set up the motion of our cats. In the next video, uh, we're going to show and we're going to work on uh, sending and deciding how to shoot enemy projectiles, which we're going to use random numbers and uh, we're going to use some more uh, slightly local variables to go ahead and decide on how and where those shots show up.